So welcome back to the bee yard, friends. Two or three weeks ago, I hung my swarm traps in the trees back over there behind you guys, and I told you I would do an update video soon on the state of our bees. Did our bees survive the Michigan winter that we had this past year? And I haven't really wanted to do this video. It's, it's not a very pleasant thing to think about. I haven't even wanted to come back here in the bee yard because I basically don't have any good news to share with you guys. I went into this past winter with five colonies. Two of them were weak, the ones on the ends. One was a swarm that I caught last year and I late in the year, and the other was a split that I did late in the year probably shouldn't have done the split but they were going to swarm anyway so i knew they were weak going into it those two so if they if they didn't survive it was like i'm not going to be surprised these three in the middle however those were some really strong colonies and none of them survived i think uh, three weeks ago when i was out here and i checked on them maybe four weeks ago there were some flyers still some bees flying out of a couple of these but they've just declined since then and there's no more bees flying so all five of our colonies this winter died we're gonna tear down a little bit holy cow this top box is totally full of food honey to be more specific man oh. I think it's pretty safe to say these bees didn't starve. There was honey, all, all their sugar, and don't think you guys can probably see it. Sugar, mountain camp on the top, emergency food supply. They never touched that honey. So I guess before we get too far into this, keeping bees over winter in a cold climate place like where we live, you basically have three things to contend with. Three things are up against you the entire time. First one being food. Not an issue. <laughs> Second is mites. Um, this last year, I treated for mites more aggressively than I ever have before. I bought an oxalic acid vaporizer and once a week for six weeks, I treated every single one of these hives with oxalic acid. I think the general rule is to do it maybe five times. I did it six. So that kind of rules that out possibly. Um, and the third item is moisture. Now I run quilt boxes. They look like this on the top of all of my hives. And they're filled with burlap bags and they're designed to collect all the moisture from the hive into these fibers and then it vents out to get that moisture removed and i've had great luck with them before and so have a lot of other people so those are kind of the three main threats that you're dealing with um, and just a little bit about what i did to counteract those threats um, this video today is not going to be a full forensic analysis of of let's get the microscope out and look at these bees and figure out exactly why these hives died. I have a theory, but I spent a lot of time yesterday going through um, the next two hives over from where you guys are yesterday um, and took tons and tons of photos, like really up close photos of the bees. And I've been going through them on my computer, zooming in, looking for mites and I haven't seen any yet, but I'm not done going through all the pictures, so. So what do I absolutely love about beekeeping? The big thing, first and foremost, probably a tie. I love seeing bees everywhere. I love seeing them all over our dandelions. I love seeing them all over the garden when Rachel's out there this summer and just covered in the borage and the sunflowers. I love seeing them pollinating all of our fruit trees, the neighbor's fruit trees. I just, I love seeing bees. I love seeing them everywhere I go. And that's how our homestead has been for the last three years. 
And the second part of this one is the, when I said it's a tie, is the learning aspect of beekeeping. So when I first started beekeeping, you don't really know a lot. By the end of the first year, you've ac accumulated a lot of knowledge. So you learn a lot when you're a beekeeper. If you're an engaged beekeeper, there's, there's some people who <laughs> kind of be owners and <laughs> they're kind of hands off. Not me, I wanna be hands in. I wanna, I wanna get to know my bees and I wanna learn everything I can about them. And I'm one of those people that really thrives on that process. I love to learn new things, whether it's beekeeping or carpentry or it's just who I am. I just, I, I thrive on learning. This one actually had some capped brood in it still. So those are, those are the main things that I love about beekeeping. It's the, it's the bees having bees everywhere and then the learning process because by the time you're done with year one, your learning process isn't over. By the time you're at year 10, <laughs> your learning process still isn't over. There's still more to learn. And I just thrive on that. This is like dead empty. This bottom, there's hardly any food anywhere. Let's check this one too. Yeah, a little pollen, a little honey. So the, basically this bottom box is almost empty. No food, a little bit of pollen here and there. Oh, this one has some food in it. And yet the top box is completely full. Like I said, our point today isn't to forensically analyze this hive and determine what happened, but what do I hate about beekeeping? Part of hate about beekeeping is, and it's kind of tied to what I love about beekeeping, is in a normal scenario, when you go through life and you're learning something new, year one, you learn some stuff. You take what you learned into year two and you apply that and you get better. Year two, you also learn new things. So now when you roll into year three of this new skill that you're developing, you have all the knowledge that you gained from the second year, the first year, and what you're gonna learn in the third year to apply all of that knowledge to your new skill. You can, with beekeeping, sometimes those rules don't apply. You can do you can do absolutely everything right and apply every single lesson you learned from year one, two, three, four, five, six, ten 10 years worth of beekeeping. You can apply all of those lessons towards your success and still be a total failure because they're, they're bees. These bees are, are wild bees and we as humans think we know what's best for them. We think we know how to take care of them. We think we know what they need and we do our best and people are successful at it. But that, that part about applying my learning along the way and still failing is what's really frustrating to me. And that's the part about beekeeping that I hate. It's been really when I came out here yesterday and I, and I filmed, I actually filmed this entire video that I'm redoing today on that hive right there. And about halfway through the process, something happened to my microphone and the battery cut out. So I had to scrap the whole thing and redo all this today. But I got to the point when I was in the bottom of that box yesterday and in basically picking up handfuls of dead bees and holding them in my hands, 
And I think I sat there for like five minutes and I didn't say a word. The camera was rolling and it was just, it was just me holding my dead bees, feeling both like sad and frustrated at the same time. Frustrating indeed, thus my lack of uh, motivation to get out here and film these videos. It felt, um, it's a bit humbling, I guess one could say, so that when, so I've been posting beekeeping videos on our Homestead YouTube channel now for three years. And this fourth year, I basically have to come and say my bees all died. So it's a little humbling in a way, but there was a um, video I watched the other day. Kaylee over at the Honeystead posted a video. Um, and her entire message in this video was to keep on keeping in that when you're a beekeeper and you're somebody like me or her or Vino Farm or VW Family Farm, and you're if you're a beekeeper and you're sharing your experience with people on YouTube and you have a failure like this, you lose one hive, you lose five hives or 14 out of 15 hives like Vino Farm, you almost have a responsibility as a beekeeper to share that with people because new beekeepers who may watch your videos and think, oh, beekeeping looks easy. Let's do this. They're going to run into problems just like you ran into. And if nobody ever posts a video or shares a story about those failures with those new beekeepers, they're going to think it's not normal when they have failures. And it is. It, it can be totally normal to fail at something like this. And I think it's important to share it. And it's, it's probably just as important, like Kaylee mentioned in her video, I'll link her video down in the description below the like button, that it, it's almost have the same responsibility to keep going to, to, that's why I put my swarm traps back up in my trees because I know there's bees around here. I'm still seeing bees on my dandelions, on my snow glories up by the house. There's bees around here. So if I can catch some, I'll catch them. And if I don't, am I gonna buy some more bees this year? I don't know. I think when I first realized all my bees were dead, it really did cross my mind that, you know what? I have a lot of money in invested in all this equipment. I could probably just sell it all and walk away or maybe I'll take the year off. I Have I ultimately decided um, if I catch bees, I'm gonna be a beekeeper this year. Am I going to invest money and buy bees again this year, that decision I haven't made yet. However, I think there's probably a pretty good chance if you, if you subscribe to our channel and you watch our videos week after week or day after day, depending on our post cycle for that given week, you're probably gonna see me in a beekeeping suit a little bit later this year, so. I know this was a lot and I, and but I feel like it was important to just kind of share it with you guys. Um, we've often felt it very important as part of our YouTube journey to, to never paint this perfect picture because life isn't perfect, you know? And if we only post perfect videos, it's, it's not real life and that's not what we want to portray and it's not what we want to share with you guys. So we, share our failures just like we share. Rachel pulls her canning jar out of the canner and the jars broke, staying in the video because it happened, it's real life. We're not gonna be fake with you guys, so. I need to, going forward, I need to decide what I'm gonna do with all this honey. There's this bottom box obviously has none. I know bees can run into a situation where they they cannot move their cluster during the winter. They'll cluster up to keep warm. They can't move up to where the food is and they can die from starvation even though the top box was full of food. So 
it's definitely a possibility. But that box weighs probably 50 pounds. So I need to decide what I'm gonna do with all that honey. I've been reluctant about keeping it because I fed my bees last fall, probably 20 gallons of syrup in the fall. And I always had some of that honeybee healthy, which has like lemongrass oil in it and different things. So I'm not guaranteed that that's pure honey. It could be laced with sugar water. It could taste like lemongrass. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know exactly what to do with it. If you guys have advice for me um, on what to do with that, let me know. The sky's getting dark again, so I'm gonna get this hive put back together, get this lid on and head in the house, get myself cleaned up, covered in propolis and honey. But I wanted to thank you guys for, thank you for spending time with us. It's not something that we don't always say verbally, but it's something that's always, always with us. We. You guys give us your time when you spend time with us and watch our videos, and that's really important to us. So I wanted to close out today by thanking you guys. Um, I think we're getting close to having 700 videos posted on YouTube, so it's been a long, a long, it's two years, three years. Yeah, this is our third year doing it, so it's still fun. We're gonna keep on doing it, and uh, hopefully I catch myself a swarm. If I don't, I don't. And will I buy some bees? Maybe, you'll have to see. Let's see if I put my bee suit on again this year, if I take the year off or, I don't know. I haven't fully decided yet. See you guys on the next video.